To delineate a watershed, you must be able to identify land surface features from topographic contours. This is training module 2.04a for the stochastic empirical loading and dilution model seldom. The materials in this training module are adapted from information in Army Field Manual 3-25.26, Map Reading and Land Navigation. This presentation has 11 slides and will take about six minutes. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This training module has three learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the relations between topographic contours on a map and the land surface features that affect the flow of surface runoff, list common types of terrain features, and identify such features using a topographic map. A hill is an area of high ground. If you stand on a hilltop, the ground slopes away from you in all directions. The map view on the left represents a hill with contour lines forming concentric circles. The inside of the smallest circle is the hilltop. The cartoon on the right shows the shape of the hill represented by these contour lines in landscape view. The blue arrows superimposed on the figure represent potential flow directions. Water flows downhill perpendicular to the contour lines. Hills are watershed divides because the water flows in different directions from the peak. A ridge is a sloping line of high ground that forms a watershed divide. These diagrams show a ridge line in landscape view on the left with the map view on the right. Think of a ridge line as high ground that runs along a hill. A series of connected hills forms a ridge line. If you stand on the center line of a ridge, you will normally have low ground in three directions and high ground in one direction. If you cross a ridge, you will climb to the crest and descend to the base. A map represents a ridge with a U or V-shaped contour lines, but unlike a valley, the closed end of the contour lines points to lower ground. The blue arrows superimposed on this figure represent potential flow directions. The light blue dash line represents the watershed divide following the nose of the ridge line. A spur is a short ridge line running perpendicular to a ridge line or hilltop. Three spurs are shown in the map view on the left and the landscape view on the right. The ground will slope downward in three directions and upwards in one direction on a spur. On a map, the contour lines representing a spur are U-shaped, pointing away from higher ground. In most cases, a draw will be situated to the left or right of the spur or lying between two spurs. The blue arrows superimposed on this figure represent potential flow directions. The light blue dashed line represents the watershed divide following the nose of each spur. A cliff is a vertical or near vertical feature. The cliff is shown in landscape view on the left and map view on the right. On a map, the contour lines for cliffs are nearly touching or the contour lines come together to form one contour line depicting the edge of the cliff. Newer maps may also depict a cliff with the same type of tick marks used in depicting a depression, with the tick lines facing downward representing the vertical face of the cliff. The blue arrows superimposed on this figure represent potential flow directions. The light blue dash line represents a possible watershed divide defined by the nose of the cliff. A saddle is a dip or a low point between two areas of higher ground. The saddle is shown in map view on the left and landscape view on the right. If you stand in a saddle, you have high ground in two opposite directions and lower ground in the other two directions. The contour lines on a map representing a saddle are shaped like an hourglass. Saddles are watershed divides, but the dividing line can be ambiguous in the seat of the saddle. The blue arrows superimposed on this figure represent potential flow directions. The light blue dash line represents a possible watershed divide defined by the saddle. A draw is a small valley. The draw is shown in map view on the left and landscape view on the right. A draw has essentially no level ground. If you are standing in a draw, the ground slopes upward in three directions and downward in the remaining direction. You could consider a draw to be the initial formation of a valley. A valley will usually have many draws feeding to the valley with streams or intermittent streams feeding into the body of water flowing through the valley. On a map, the contour lines depicting a draw may be U-shaped or sharply V-shaped pointing to higher ground. In this case, we see that the two hilltops on the left do not form part of the basin divide because the flow from both sides drains to the same point in the valley floor. A depression is a sinkhole or low point in the ground. The depression is shown in landscape view on the left and map view on the right. Think of a depression as an upside down hill. 
If you stand in the center of a depression, you will have higher ground in all directions. A map represents a depression with contour lines forming concentric circles. Tick marks point to lower ground. Surface mining can cause depressions. The blue arrows superimposed on this figure represent potential flow directions into a depression. Unless there is a surface water outflow, depressions are non-contributing areas for calculating storm flows. A cut is a man-made feature that cuts through raised ground. A fill is a man-made feature that fills a low area. Cut and fill sections tend to occur together because engineers use earthworks balance methods to create relatively level bed for a road, railroad track, or other man-made structures. These features are shown in map view on the left and landscape view on the right. The cut and fill sections may be defined using tick marks on the map that point to lower ground. This diagram is not well suited for showing alterations in flow direction, but cut and fill sections commonly alter natural drainage patterns. In this training module, we saw how different topographic contour patterns correspond to features on the land surface. By drawing flow lines perpendicular to contour lines, we saw how topographic features can be used to delineate watershed divides. We examined the characteristics of a hill, a ridge, a spur, a cliff, a saddle, a draw, a depression, and cut and fill sections and discuss potential effects of each on flow patterns. The contour patterns and associated sketches should help you identify landforms on a map.